So here I have a HANA nitrate tester. And I'm going to show you how to use it. Uh, one of the hobbyists bought one and he wanted to know how to use it. So I filled a vial up to 10 milliliter mark with uh, my antique goldfish aquarium water. And I double checked this, even though it says marine, some people are going to say, oh, it says marine. It's not as accurate. I checked it against an API with a standard solution, and I tested it against a Lamont. The Lamont test kit is a pretty elaborate test kit. comes with this, and it goes down to 0.25 to 10 points per million of nitrates. Uh, this is a very expensive test kit. This one's going to basically be used for professionals, I would say. It comes with uh, different chemicals in it. Uh, some of the chemicals, as you can see, skull and crossbone are poisonous. So this is not something that um, you'd want around children because this is poison. You don't want to get that on your hands. So because of that, it, it probably is not one that a lot of hobbyists would buy, but it's a professional kit, okay? It's for DVMs, uh, liminologists, you know, stuff like that. They'll, they'll use like the Lamont because they want a lot more accurateness. But anyhow, I tested this against the API and the Lamont, and it checks out. I know it says marine, but don't forget, this one also does marine. Okay, it does both. One test kit does marine and freshwater. The color just changes slightly for the marine. Uh, the marine, the colors are going to be lighter, where the freshwater, it's going to be darker. That's all. So the colors on here are probably going to be darker than where if this was marine water, it would just be lighter in color. And the same way with the Lamont. It does the same thing. Uh, this is for freshwater. Could you do marine? Yeah, but it would show lighter. So you would have to remember to kind of compensate for that. Same thing with the API, that uh, it will change it. But it is capable of doing fresh and salt water. So I double-checked this with a solution, tap water. I knew what the tap water was. I checked all three of them against each other. They all read the same. I figured it's close enough. They're all... They're all showing good. Believe it or not, the API, from what you can see from the color chart of one of these APIs, it, it looked like it, it matched everything. Okay, these are kind of hard to read for a lot of people, the colors, but it, it looked like it matched everything where it was sh showing zero parts per million of a nitrates. This showed zero, and, of course, the Lamont showed zero. If they're all showing zero, then it's zero. Zero, zero. Okay, so anyhow, what I'm going to do is show you uh, and then I tried it out with uh, five parts per million of nitrates, checked all three of them out, and they all read the same. Uh, even the API, as far as you can tell on the API, uh, it's not as accurate as this or the Lamont, but still it's, it's good enough for a hobbyist, you know. But anyhow, if you want something that's pretty easy, this is pretty easy. All you have to do, is, first of all, is turn it on. So you push the button once. And it, it's on. It says C1, calibration one. That's what that stands for. So you have a 10 milliliter bottle. You fill it full of your aquarium water that you want to test. If you want, you can take the test kit and first test your tap water before you test your aquarium water. I like to wipe down the you know this with a rag to get any fingerprints off of it. Put it in here. You close it up. Now you press the button once more. And it's calibrating that vial. That means calibration two. You open it up, pull the vial out, open the vial, get your package, which is in a foil package. Now, this water is from the antique aquarium. This is the antique aquarium that's running 100% off of a, uh, 
BCB basket. I like to put it to a little point like this. It's easier to tap and knock it in. That's it. Now close it up. Mix it up real good. Now you don't have to do this like 30 seconds or anything, but just, just vigorously mix it up. Shake it up to dissolve the powder. And that's it. That's it. You'll see air bubbles in there. I don't know if you can see them, but don't worry about that. I'll put it back in because it's going to take over seven minutes for this now to calibrate the nitrogen that's in my antique aquarium. Now you press the button again, but this time you press it and hold the button to start the timer. So I press and hold. There, the timer has started. Then you let go of the button. So you have calibration one, which means it's going to look at the turbidity of the vial and measure that. Then it'll go to C2, which means calibration two, which is now adding the regent to it. Shake it up vigorously, put it in there. Then you hold the button, and it will start going to the counter. When it goes to the counter, let go of the button. And for the next seven minutes, it is going to accurately count down to read what my nitrates are inside of the antique aquarium. And like I said, the antique aquarium is the one I'm doing a little plant experiment. It's It has... Nothing. Uh, the only thing, it, it's it's a bare bottom aquarium. And it's being run off of a canister filter with a BCB basket. Remember, I think I showed you that in some of my videos. That's all it's being run off of. There's no uh, sponge filters. There's no hang on the back filters. It uh, uses the Asta 120 light to help the my experiment with the two plants, uh, that is set at about 80%, not 100%, 80%. And it's next to a window. And right now, because it's October, the sun is going down lower. So in the uh, afternoon, it gets direct sunlight in this aquarium, where in the summer it doesn't get direct sunlight. But it, does, it gets very bright light because it's right next to the window. Uh, the window is facing south, but uh, now it will get direct sunlight because the you know the sun now is is lower in the sky. So now the sun comes directly into it, and that happens uh, every year. So we're going to take a look to see what the nitrates are in that aquarium. Let's see. What else can I tell you? Well, that, that's about it with that tank. It doesn't have a big fish low. It has uh, uh, 20 quarry catfish in it. Plus, I put the uh, bettas in there with the uh, guppies. I put the bettas in there because it uh, in the lanai, the betta container is getting too cold, and I'm waiting for a stand to come in so I can move that tank into my office where it will stay warmer Okay, for the bettas. Uh, this is Florida. I don't need a heater. All, all, and I made a plenum. That was in one of my videos. So, basically, uh, I'm waiting, and uh, I don't know if I'm going to put those bettas back in, or if I'll just buy, you know, new fish and put them in that aquarium, and keep them in here for this uh, winter, because it does get cool here in Florida during the mornings. And in the evenings, it will get cooler. But during the day, like, like today was 66 in the morning. I checked out the Goldfish Aquarium. It was about 70 degrees. So you can't have that with bettas. You know what I mean? So that's why I had to pull them. Otherwise, you're going to get sick or they're not, not going to eat. So I pulled them out, put them in the in-house aquarium. 
so that it will stay warmer. And but by evening, by let's say four o'clock, it's already like 82, 85 degrees. And then as the evening goes on, seven, eight, nine o'clock, you'll you'll feel like it's cooler again here in Florida. So with that temperature fluctuation like that, um, having the any tropical fish outside isn't good unless you had a larger body of water that wouldn't change very fast. You know, the goldfish, if it changes, let's say right now this morning, it was 70 degrees, which is a little cool for tropical fish. Uh, it, it may go up to 72, maybe 73. That's it. That little bit of change is not going to cause any problem with goldfish. It's, it's not enough and it's gradual. The temperature change is so gradual. As long as it's within plus or minus five degrees, it's not going to bother them or give them um, ick or anything else. You're not going to come up with problems. <clears throat> so that's why I did it. So we're going to test the nitrates out, find out what they are in the antique aquarium. And uh, this is real time. And I hope me explaining this but yes, I did double check it. I know someone's going to say, oh, this is marine. And, and one person said, yeah, I called Hannah and they do make a freshwater one. I understand that. But you can, if you can't get the freshwater one, you can buy this. And it's going to be more than accurate enough. It's going to be a lot more accurate than this. I can tell you that. This does not compete with this. And it's going to come very, very comparable to this Lamont. And this is a very professional experience. So if this compares to the Lamont, well, and I'm going to pretty well say it's accurate enough for, you know, 99.9% .9 of the hobbyists out there, even though it says Marine on it. it. It's going to be good enough. I don't, don't sweat the small stuff when it comes to whether it says Marine or freshwater on, these, on the Hannah test kit because I have double checked it and I find it to be so close that you're, you know, you're splitting gnat hairs, I guess is what I'm saying. Uh, don't worry about it. So this should be over in what, 43 seconds we have left. And then we'll be able to see what the nitrate reading is on the antique aquarium. And that's it. That's the test kit that, uh, it's that simple to use. It only takes a few minutes. It times it out for you. So how much easier can you be? You get an accurate timing of reading it. I'll pull the vial out so you can see the color of it when it does give a reading. Now, I just fed the fish this morning. Like I said, I have about 20 quarries in there. So I have to feed them enough to feed the quarries. So let's see what the nitrates are. Okay, the nitrates are zero. All right. I don't have any nitrates in that aquarium. There you have proof positive. All that tank is being run off of is a BCB basket and a canister filter. There's your nitrates. It doesn't have any nitrate. I just fed them. Um, this morning, and like I said, I have the potted plants, no gravel. Uh, I put the plant that uh, I had in the beta container, I put that plant, Anubius, in there that was full of algae. I think that was in a video. I, I just squirted it off. And uh, that seems to be doing okay. It doesn't seem to be growing back the algae. And in the beta container, it grew all this string algae. And I cleaned it. It came back. I even sprayed it with hydrogen peroxide. It came back. But it doesn't look like this time it's coming back, putting it into the antique goldfish aquarium. So there you are water right from the antique aquarium. 
reading zero nitrates. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say that for the hobbyists, or for the people that turn around and say the anoxy filtration system doesn't work, it depends on a lot of things. And here is a case in point where I did the test right in front of you. Uh, I'll be more than happy if anybody wants to come over and wants me to do a test in front of them. I'll be more than happy to do a test right in front of you. That's what I'm reading. Uh, the plants are doing well because I got the crypts in there. Okay, with this test, I'm going to test out the Goldfish Aquarium. And this water is from the Lanai Aquarium, in case you're, you're new and haven't seen the Goldfish Aquarium. It's uh, only a 40-gallon breeder, and it's got some good-sized goldfish in there. It's overcrowded. And this is an older picture of it, but the Harnworth is not really in there anymore. But anyway, uh, it's over a year old. So the goldfish have been in there over a year. It's never had its substrate cleaned or anything like that. Um, uh, the nitrates in here, the last time I tested it was about 20 parts per million. Uh haven't really been doing the water changes like I, sh I should because it is out in the lanai. I haven't been bothering with it too much. It uses two of the uh, Asta 120 lights over it. And I did a video where I added uh, the pothos to the whole aquarium. And uh, we'll see if that's helped with the nitrates any uh, because the root system's grown real good of the uh, Devil's Ivy. And I also added the fern to it, the lemon button fern. The roots of that are grown good. It's, it's bringing out new branches. We'll see if it has done anything with the nitrates in the aquarium. So the fish seem to be doing okay. The colors look good. But uh, I wonder if the nitrates are going to be higher or lower than what I've been normally reading. And that's another reason I added the, uh, the Devil's Ivy to it, to find out if it will lower the nitrates, as people claim that they will do. So in just a few seconds, we're going to find out what the nitrate reading is of the Goldfish Aquarium compared to the aquarium that's antique 23.6 so it really hasn't lowered any of the nitrates the pothos have it so this just goes to show you that uh are the pothos really working uh the older aquarium not having water changes is only 23.6 that's not bad, but it's not great. I'd like to see to get that lower. So I may have to uh, now take the bubbler and lower it. So we can see what happens with that. This is the one that's running off the BCB bags. Anyhow, that's it for this video. This is Dr. Novak. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll have more videos coming up in the future. I at least try to do two videos a week for everybody. Until next time, happy fish keeping.